So Bernie Sanders' campaign has out-fundraised all the Republican contenders. But of course, there's one tremendous loophole, which in essence rigged the game against him. So this is really interesting because if you think about it, the fact that you're able to fundraise from more people would indicate what? You're actually more popular. But the thing is, the Republicans, because of the super PAC system and the way that's set up, they're actually raising more as a dollar amount. So let me give you more details on that. Raw Story explains, quote, The Sanders campaign on the Democratic side has managed to tap small donors to quickly raise large totals. As of its most recent reporting, the campaign raised $15 million from 400,000 donations. Wow. From 200,000 donors. In contrast, Jeb Bush raised 11.4 million. Okay, wow, so less. And Ted Cruz raised around 14 million. Again, less. No GOP campaign matched the Sanders Hall. And then they continue and say, but there's a catch, like I was alluding to. While Sanders is creating the broadest base of financial support, there is another factor at play super PACs. They allow billionaires and corporations to effectively spend whatever they want. Bush's super PAC raised $103 million, around 10 times as much as the candidate raised through his actual campaign, and Cruz's super PAC raised over $30 million, twice as much as what his campaign raised. So we were uh, speaking about this a few weeks ago. Jeb Bush and a bunch of other Republican candidates did the sleaziest political trick imaginable. What they did is they held off on officially announcing their presidential run solely so they can go around and raise money for their super PACs. And when you raise money for your super PACs, there's no cap whatsoever. There's no limits whatsoever. So corporations and billionaires can just throw money at you and make it rain. So the idea is, well, the second we announce, then there's some slightly more strict campaign finance rules uh, that go into effect, and I can't talk to my super PAC, so let me just basically tell everybody I'm gonna run in not so many words, raise money for the super PAC, and then eventually officially announce, and then they're already set with a tremendous amount of money. Now, Bernie Sanders decided, I'm not even gonna do a super PAC. Now, I told you guys at the beginning, I'm actually kind of split on that, because he actually would have a better chance of winning if he did a super PAC, but then again, if he did it, he would appear to be a hypocrite because he always speaks out against money in politics and he wants to do campaign finance reform and people could use that against him and say, well, you say you're against it, then why are you doing it? But I don't know how much I buy that argument because if the system is set up as it is, to not do that would be unilateral disarmament. You can disagree with the system, you know, but still partake in it if it's already set up like that and then if slash when you get elected, change the system. But I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. That's another conversation for another day. So I digress from that. But the bottom line is, as they laid out clearly, Bernie Sanders raised more money from more people, small donors, regular people. And the Republican candidates raise much less for their actual campaigns from people but they're raising the bulk of their money from corporations and from billionaires, and it's going through their super PAC. So this is like basically a study. It's like a scientific study that was set up perfectly to see how broken our democracy is. Because you have people like Jeb Bush and Ted Cruz raise way more money when their ideas aren't nearly as popular. And the only reason they're raising that money is because it's a wink and a nod to the corporations and the billionaires we're going to do your bidding. We're going to do what you want. So you give us money. And meanwhile, the person who actually represents the American people raised uh, much less. And it's almost like you can't have a fair system if private money is involved. Because how could it possibly be fair when there's such tremendous inequality in who has wealth? I mean, if money equals free speech, then quite literally... Some voices are just louder than others. You're going to have Sheldon Adelson's vote and his voice count much more than some grandmother who lives in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And that, in my opinion, fundamentally violates uh, the idea of one man, one vote. I mean, it should be that we're all heard equally and that we actually legislate in a representative democracy based on what the people want. But that, that idea is now so far gone and so removed from the system that people look at these facts and they go, well, yeah, what would you expect? And where's the media on this, man? The media's job is to look at this and go, 
hey, wait a second. This seems a little fucked up. This seems like it's the opposite of what a democracy is supposed to be. But of course, they're so used to it. And they also are the benefactors of money in politics because it buys ads that they just go, oh, I guess that, sh that is it is what it is and we won't even discuss it. Well, you're doing a disservice to the American people by not discussing it. And the system as it's set up is, of course, a disservice to the American people and a slap in the face to democracy.